Okay, everybody, let's do some mapping. Bam. Knocking stuff over already. So we have to start with our guidelines on the plantar surface of the feet. Um, and what we'll do that's a little bit different from our previous videos is we will actually map some of the other reflexes just so that you know how to check for those reflex areas. So we're just drawing our guidelines. We have uh, first and foremost, our shoulder line guideline where the toes meet the ball of the foot, our diaphragm guideline underneath the ball of the foot, the proximal head of the fifth metatarsal about halfway down the arch, uh, which divides into our waistline guideline, and then we have our uh, pelvic guideline just above the heel. If we wanted to also for this, the purpose of these reflexes, etch our plantar tendon, we totally can, um, which is just that pesky tendon that runs down the uh, plantar surface of the foot. So what I wanted to draw your attention to first and foremost is we covered this a little bit in the skeletal system, but the idea of the box theory of the joints, and we'll look at this a little bit more on the other uh, views of the feet, but I really wanted to highlight the shoulder reflexes and then the hip reflexes, which we can't really see very well um, on this view, but they're in horizontal zone four, they are the lateral malleoli. Do you see how we've created this box shape? Yeah. So this is very much how the body is organized. When a box is even, you know, the four corners are in alignment, but if one edge of the box starts to deviate either because of an injury um, or something like that, then the whole box has to shift accordingly, which puts pressure on joints that aren't meant to take that much pressure. So what we want to be aware of with the lymphatic system is that although we're going to be mapping specific portal reflexes for the lymph, that skeletal structure is going to be super important because the bones are the gateway for the lymph. Now, um, let's talk about real quick kidney. So kidney reflex is halfway above and halfway below the uh, waistline guideline in line with the second or third toe, just depending on who you have on your table. It shifts a little bit on everybody, um, and that is our kidney reflex. Also, if you wanted to draw a ureterm bladder, just a flashback to the uh, urinary system. Um, just as an FYI, but then what I really wanted to play with here, oh, and we got to do the adrenal because the adrenal sits right on top of the kidneys. Okay, but now to the actual portals for the lymphatic system. So the lymph drains into the subclavian veins, sub meaning underneath, clavian as in clavicle, and then veins as in uh, the vessel portal. So the clavicle would be literally on the shoulder line guideline. Because if we think of the toes as head and neck, then just as the head and neck starts to go into the chest, we have our clavicle. So I'm just gonna highlight that in blue, and that's going to represent the reflex for the clavicle on either side. So this is the area that we want to check for that dorsal, that uh, plantar aspect of the ball of the foot, just along that shoulder line guideline for any fluid backup. That's gonna tell us a lot about the subclavian area um, in terms of drainage, just in terms of direct lymph. And then we're going to flip to our other picture of the various surfaces of the feet to draw some specific distinctions. If the picture would be ever so kind and come with me, there we go, okay. So let's talk about the dorsal surface because the dorsal surface is, is very, very important. So we have, again, shoulder line guideline, uh, diaphragm guideline, proximal head, waistline guideline, and then pelvic line guideline through the back. It gets really easy once you just draw them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, so again, the subclavian. Although technically the dorsal aspect of the foot represents the back of the body, same principles apply. You know, if somebody has C7 pain all the time, um, it, they're more prone to having that physical impingement of the joints, which leads to lymphatic backup. Also, if we wanted to really focus on um, all three of these, or two of these pictures rather, the spinal reflexes, because 
where the spine deviates. It can also tell us a lot about where the lymphatic system might be impinged, but also lymphatic impingement can cause spinal pain. So the two feed into each other and they're just really, really good to know. And then again, we have that idea of the shoulder reflexes and then the hip reflexes, which we can very much see on our lateral view there. So that would be the shoulder, that would be the hip. Um, and then we can't really see it on the medial view there. But what we can see on the dorsal, medial, and uh, lateral view is going to be our fallopian tube vas deferens reflexes. Now, Sam, this is the lymphatic system, not the reproductive system. Why are you drawing the fallopian tube vas deferens reflex? Some of my live students might already know because although on most maps, the dorsal ankle bridge, the bridge of tendons on the dorsal ankle represents that reproductive space. And it is definitely a very key, if you wanted to go to the reproductive system masterclass um, and just review that, it is very, very key to palpate for like um, cysts, any sort of physical impingement of the reproductive area. But we have to remember, like we said in the muscular system, this is also very, very deep pelvis. This is also iliopsoas. This is also all of the deep core. And so when we think of major lymphatic portal, this is going to be an area that tends to be flooded with fluid physically. If somebody is coming in and they have swelling of the feet, this is where you're going to find it on the dorsal aspect of the foot. Normally it's going to be towards that hip reflex on the lateral sides, and then it will gradually pull up. Um, into that subclavian area. And you can literally see the backup happening, especially when in the case of like a, um, a lower body impingement that's affecting the, the upper body. So what we want to really be aware of is that this dorsal ankle space really tells us a lot about how the, the lower core aspects of those inguinal nodes, that inguinal lymph drainage, that groin lymph drainage, how that's doing in its journey back up towards uh, the subclavian veins. And then if we wanted to just be really fun and uh, carefree, we could also draw the kidneys on there and the ureters which go into the bladder. Kidney, bladder. And then we can't really see it on that aspect. Cool. So that is that. Oh, and adrenals. Can't forget the adrenals. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Always find that on the dorsal aspect, right in between the, the first and second metatarsal heads proximally, there's always that, that point that seems to be super stress oriented and that's because it's the dorsal aspect of the adrenals. Imagine that. Okay. Moving on to the hands. Hands, about to get handsy. Uh, we have our shoulder line guideline. Again, the hands are structured just a little bit differently, so we have to do this weird swooping motion. I know it's crazy, but that's the way we map it. Then we have our waistline guideline, the proximal head of the fifth metacarpal, because this is a carpal area, not a tarsal area. And then that imaginary line in between the distal and proximal rows of the carpals of the hand. Okay. So we have our shoulder reflexes. Again, remember the hands are a little bit tricky because we're mapping them anatomically. Uh, so even though this is the medial aspect and the shoulders are lateral, we have to imagine the hands like this because the thumbs represent the big toes and the fifth digits represent the fifth digits. Okay, so those are our shoulders, those are our hips. And then we have that subclavian area at our shoulder line guideline. Okay, so we're really looking for swelling at the base of the fingers here, just like we would be looking for swelling at the base of the toes, ball, the foot, um, even into the knuckle area. Then if we wanted to draw our kidneys, kidneys are, are really fun to draw because they're literally right in the belly of the hypothenar. Or no, I'm sorry, the thenar, not the hypothenar. Hypothenar is here. So silly. Oh, forgot the bladder. And then bladder goes medial.
then we have our adrenal, so that point that everybody presses in the center of that thenar area in order to take away a headache, that's why the adrenal is right there. Okay, and then if we wanted to, just for giggles, before we look at the dorsal aspect, we'll draw our spinal reflexes. Just a little bit of all over review, test your knowledge. Okay, now we get to start to look at the dorsal aspect in terms of all of those really fun hip lymph drainage areas. So we have, again, shoulder line, diaphragm line, waistline, pelvic line, shoulder line, diaphragm line, waistline, pelvic line. Okay. So subclavian area, this is going to be our major lymphatic drainage point that we're going to be assessing for. Then we have our kidney reflex, if we wanted to do on the dorsal surface, again, right in the middle of that thenar area. Adrenals. Okay. Now let's take a look at the shoulder and hip. Okay. So with the shoulder and hip, we're really going to be looking at that dorsal aspect Actually, I used a different color for that, didn't I? I used pink. Just kidding. So we have our dorsal aspect, and then all of those dorsal tendons of the extensors of the hands, the muscles that make your hand go out or into extension um, versus flexion, which makes them go in. Um, we have all of those nice pelvic muscles uh, and all of those reproductive spaces, but also all of those deeper, lower pelvic lymph reflexes. Then we can't really see it, but just to, to draw the spine. Always follow that thumb or big toe line. Okay, looks pretty good to me. Now, on to the face. The face. Guidelines are Shoulder line in line with the eyebrows, giving them a unibrow. Underneath the zygomatic bone, making them a raccoon, or like they're gonna rob a bank. Then we extend the smile line for, or the lip line for the waistline. And then that cleft of the chin extends all the way to the jaw, which we can't really draw properly on a 2D image, but you would trace the jaw all the way to the ends of the face. All the way to the ends of the earth. Okay, so we have the temples, which represent the shoulders. Then we have the jaw area, which represents the hip. And that creates our box for the body. We then have our subclavian reflexes at the shoulder line. But here's the deal. A lot of people get really, really uh, interested in the fact that I call the eyes the chest lung space as well as heart, as well as major lymphatic portal. So what I look for when a client comes in, in terms of if I think lymphatic backup is present, is I'll look for bags underneath the eyes. Now, some of you might be like, well, Sam, I have bags underneath my eyes. No, I'm talking about pools of coagulated fluid at the base of the eyes. Um, that tells me a lot not just from a physical standpoint in terms of lymphatic backup, uh, because it's literally the water pooling in the face uh, at the base of the lungs, like deep into the chest. It's also a sign of you know respiratory infection and deep-seated grief. So we talked about how the lymphatic reflexes are often associated with the emotional state because where fluid goes, emotions follow. Um, or vice versa, where emotions go, fluid follows. You know, they are very much connected. So when we look at fluid, even like upper eyelids that are kind of really baggy and saggy, uh, that are kind of taking over the eye, uh, all of that would indicate clogged lymph. Just as a fun, you know, side note. Okay, then we have our kidney reflexes on either side of the mouth, and then our bladder reflexes in the middle. Ta-da! 
and then our adrenal reflexes halfway in between the sides of the nose and the corners of the mouth right over the root of the canine tooth. Good stuff. And then the spine, spinal reflex. Uh, bam. Some of you thought I was joking, but seriously, that's the spine. So although we have, normally there's that cleft uh, in the head that you can't really see on this picture, but that ridge, just as the eyebrows start to become pronounced, that curve of the frontal bone, um, we have, that would be our cervical reflexes, then our thoracic reflexes, then our lumbar and sacral coccyx reflexes. So that's kind of like lymphatic system in a nutshell. Boop, boop, boop. And last but not least, the ears. So drawing our guidelines just above the triangular fossa. Just kind of highlight that for you real quick. We have our horizontals on one space. Diaphragm guideline just below that. You have that nice ridge just above the simbaconca to tell you where to go with that. The waistline guideline just in between the auditory opening and the simbaconca or the simbaconca cavum concha. Then just below the auditory opening as the lobe starts to form, we have our pelvic line. Cool. So we have our shoulder reflex in zone two. Then we have our hip reflex in zone four. Awesome. Then we have our subclavian reflex, which is right along the shoulder line. And then if we wanted to do, let's do spine now. So again, spine is always medial. Whee. Then we have our kidneys. So right in between the simbaconca and cavum concha, that ridge, just as we get into that nice little fold or crest, it's tucked right in there, the kidneys. Just like with all kidney reflexes on all the extremities, I mean, it'll, it will literally manifest as this bean-shaped patch, which I think is really cool. Then we have the adrenals. We have two adrenals, not just one. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. I think we got it. I think we got all the lymphatic reflexes. Just as kind of like a summary, again, we have nodes everywhere. So it's not like we can map the nodes individually. They are omnipresent. They are everywhere. Yes, we have clusters, but those clusters tend to form around the major joint reflexes. So if you know your major joint reflexes, you know where the nodes are going to be. And then all you need to understand is the drainage aspect at the subclavian vein to look at fluid backup and be able to actually see fluid in the extreme extremities because where you see fluid back up that indicates the exact same fluid back up in that reflex area in the body it's one for one so we really just need to pay attention to basic anatomy here and then let the lymph tell us the rest great job everybody